Hey guys, welcome to Build and Chat. It's many month, and today we're going to be taking a paint at a wear rat. What is the Reaper Bones? Uh, I've already washed it, based it, put some, just put some uh, modeling paste around the base here, just to kind of smooth things out, make it look a little more, mo better. I don't spend a lot of time on the bases for these uh, because. These are just kind of, you know, random tabletop filler models. So um, these aren't iconic models or PC models or anything. So I don't spend a ton of time on the bases and I'm not competitioning these. Um, but, um, you know, most of the Reaper Bones models do need to be put on a bigger base because they have rather small bases. And um, when you do, it looks kind of funny if you don't put some kind of filler around it to kind of even out the slopes and stuff. So anyway, that's what I've done here. And that's all I've done to this other than washing it. Very important, wash your models before you try to paint them. Otherwise you will frustrate yourself. Now, so the other thing is my palettes, I'm just putting new paper on so you guys can see how that works out. You want your sponge pretty wet. You want extra stuff, extra water sitting in the bottom around the edge that the sponge can't pick up. That's how wet you want it. Sponge needs to be full. At least for my way of painting and for most people I've seen, that's how they want it. And then you try to get as many air bubbles out of it as you can. And when you first put it on, it's gonna, your paper's gonna curl up because that's just what it does when it gets wet on one side. But we try to smooth it out and get rid of as many air bubbles as we can. I'm just using my, my thingy nails. And I know that's a little blurry because I've got the focus set for the minis, but I think you can get the idea. Probably ought to put the mic on up in my face. What you think? What you think, chat? There. Is that better? Sound better? All right. So we're going to get into the wear rat. And when we hit drying times on this and we have to wait for something to dry for a little bit, we will work on our technical faced friend here some more and see if we can get this one all finished up. So he will be our dry time distraction. Um, I did get the, the nice werewolves all done up this week. Um, so not werewolves, zombie wolves. Um, and I put the pictures up on Instagram. So if you want to see the finals of that, go check those out. Uh, on Instagram and probably want to give us follow over there too because I'm putting more and more stuff up there. Um, I didn't realize how big a deal Instagram was because I'm old and out of touch, you know. It's just one of those things. Anyway, we're going to get started on this thing. I've got my Raphael 8404 number two. Um, I use this now primarily just use this brush for everything except metallics and dry brushing. Um, even the fine details because it's got such a good point and just a very big reservoir. So this this is my brush of choice right now. Um, also, I ordered another one from Dick Blick, same brush, but this one I got from Amazon and I think a lot of the issues I'm having with the, the forking after a little bit is how they stored the stuff and shipped it. So I'm I ordered one from Dick Blick to see if um, that makes a difference because, you know, a lot of pro painters swear by this particular brush. Um, I can't imagine that it's a problem with Raphael. I suspect it was just this particular brush. So anyway, let's get on with painting some wear rats. So I'm going to use as a base coat just this flat brown. And I'm going to mix it with a bit of black just to darken it up a little because we want, you know, a real dark base coat. And I want this to be a bit of a reddish brown. So this has got, this flat brown has kind of a, I don't want to say it's red tinted, but it's over towards the red end of the spec brown spectrum. Uh, black, black, I need black. There we go. That's probably not enough of that. Because this, this is going to go over quite a bit of area. Because, as you can see, um, he doesn't, well, I mean, he's wearing kind of a tunic-y thing. 
So I guess that's not that much that it's going to go on. Arms, legs, head. Yeah, and then the tail's going to be a bit pinkish, so... This may be enough. Especially once I get a little bit of black in there. Alright, so... I don't want a lot of black, just want to darken it up a little bit. And I'm not going to thin, because this is a base coat, I'm not going to thin it down quite as much as other layers, but I still want it kind of thin. Because I don't want it glopping on and obscuring detail. Okay, so we've got a nice dark brown here. I may have just thinned it down a little too much. But, we'll see. Multiple coats is fine. It's fine, chat. Better better more thin coats than, than fewer glop coats. Hey, Sid. How are you? Long time no see. How have things been going? I haven't been able to watch you guys' channel for a while either. Things have been just nuts busy for, I think, everybody in the world lately. Seems like. Take off my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Of course, then I have to read chat, so I have to put my glasses back on. <laughs> Things are busy. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I suppose that's a good thing in a lot of ways, but it's kind of a bummer when you can't spend as much time with friends as you'd like. So... We're just doing a Reaper Bones wear rat here because I need to get some on the table and it's a good easy model for beginners like me. Man, are you guys getting any of this cold snap over there in Texas? Because it's chilly today. Yesterday and today in Florida was boohoo. Not Florida weather, let me tell you. We'll fix the inside of this mouth later. I just want to get some paint on it. That'll be mostly black in there, but... Forties, I know, right? I mean, it feels good, but what drives me nuts about Florida is it comes in little two-day spurts, so you get 80, 80, 80... 40, 40, 80, 80, 80, and everybody's sick and full of allergens. The allergens are going crazy right now down here because of this. all these weather changes. The trees are like, wait, what do we do? We don't know what to do. Do we put out the pollen? Do we not put out the pollen? I'm saying not, but, you know, because my sinuses are like, you idiot. You suck moving to Florida. But what are you going to do, huh? I mean, honestly, what are you going to do? All right, so I'm trying to think, too, of what color am I going to make this tunic for this dude? Um, looks like I miss, may have missed scrubbing a little bit of a spot there. Also, this is really thin for a base coat. I thinned it a little much, but... It's okay. It's fine, chat. It's fine. I'm also struggling with this whole keeping things in frame and, and all with the minis. That's a tough job I've come to discover. As you well know, Sid. Keeping things focused and in frame this close in is kind of tough. 
used to watch these mini painters and, and think, how can that be that difficult? I mean, gosh, it's just put, you know, know where you are and put it in the camera. Well, I have a newfound respect for those mini painters and their cameras. It's not easy. So I think that's pretty much all the areas we need to do. I haven't decided if he's wearing gloves or if these are just fingies. So I'm going to go ahead and paint them. If I want to go back over and paint gloves. I mean, he's got something around his wrist. I'm assuming it's a cuff of a glove. Could just be a wrist wrap. Sometimes the detail on these plastic models is a little tough to distinguish. But, but you know, what are you going to do? All right, so... All right, so we'll let this dry real good before we go back in with another coat because we don't just pull the paint back up. So now we get to do the fun part of mini painting, watching paint dry. Ah! My brush cap was trying to get away from me. I mean, the good news about thin paints is they dry fairly quickly. But base coats take a little longer. Longer. I know, right? Keeping that in. Because I've seen you, you guys struggle with that. And, I mean, like every mini painter that I see that does videos struggles with it. Um, edited videos are obviously a little easier because you can pick and choose the good parts. But, man, it's tough. <laughs> I've come to discover, too, that, well, another thing is I'm using a um, just a webcam for this, not a DSLR, so it's got a pretty narrow focal length, so I can't, I don't have a lot of wiggle room for when things are in focus, um, but if I turn the autofocus on, then it's just constantly changing, and it makes you want to throw up. So, I'd probably be, have a little bit easier time with a DSLR because the focal length is a little longer, but what do I know? I'm not a camera guy. All right, let's dry it up. So I ordered myself an actual store-bought wet palette that should be coming. We should see that next Saturday. I should have it soon. Um, hopefully this week because not I mean this this little homemade wet palette is working good but it's too small it's just not enough room to get enough paints on for doing things especially when I because when I paint I typically will have a few minis going at once so that I can get through them while you know and not spend all my time just sitting around waiting for paint to dry So I needed a bigger one. Also, it's a bit shallower, which makes it a little easier to get to. Not that this one's real high, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are gloves. Meant to be gloves. And I kind of like the idea of him having gloves, so that's how we'll paint it. See how that's fork in there? That's got to be... Just the, the storage and shipping of this brush, because this, I mean, Raphael 8404s are really good brushes. They shouldn't be doing that. But we'll see when I get my other one. In the meantime, we just make do. You deal with the tools you have.
how do I keep it from dripping running? Well, when I put, um, you load the brush up and it's going to be drippy runny and then you tap it on your paper towel to let the extra water bleed out. Or that's how I do it anyway. So you don't, you want it to be where you tap it and the paint just goes on the paper towel and you don't get a lot of bleed. Then you know it won't run all, all over your model. Oh, paint bubble, it's not bubble. Probably got enough black on there already. So the base coats are not the fun part, but you know, what are you gonna do? You got to get them base coated. So, another good reason that, and I'm going to explain this away because I want to sound like I'm really smart. Um, Another reason that I'm watering this base coat down a little more than I normally would is because there's a lot of really fine fur detail on here and I don't want to cover it up with gloppy paint. That's why I accident, I mean on purpose, watered down the base coat a little more than usual. Because I'm smirt. Right? That sounds like a good reason, right chat? We'll go with that. We'll stick with that reason. Makes me smirt, right? S-M-U-R-T, smirt. All right, so now I want to get a little bit of do 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 do, just good old red, and a little bit of good old uh, maybe not that flesh color. Let's go with rosy skin. I'm, we're gonna do a base coat on the fleshy parts, the tail and inside the ears and stuff. But we don't want a water that's down with white. I mean, we don't want to pinkify the red with pure white because it'll get it'll look like Pepto Bismol, and that's not what I'm going for. So we'll just add a little bit of red, and it doesn't take a lot of red to add to the flesh color to get it pinky. So we wanted a nice pinky flesh color. See like this, that kind of color. And we're gonna go for the tail. Now I need to start getting to detail so I gotta take my glasses off so I can actually see. Boy, old eyes are the pits. Take my glasses off so I can see this up close, and then I can't see the paint I'm dipping into. I gotta get better glasses. I have to get some progressives. Man. Man, I'm old. It's fine, chat. It's okay to be old. That's when you get cool, right? Let me just stick that right in the camera for you. 
for a little bit so on the inside of his eels. Now here, I'm not looking to get a really pure base coat inside his ears because um, the inside of the ears aren't going to be pure pink. It's going to be more of a, they're furry, but because of the light behind them, the pink is kind of shining through. So, you know, you know how that works. Right, chat? Now, something else I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this color on his lips. Because if you look at... I mean, this is a wear rat, but but if you look at like dogs, I was just checking out one of the dogs we've got. Too. We've got a um, Great Dane here today. Big old, almost 200 pound. I guess he, she's about 200 pound. Great Dane. And a lot of times on dogs that have lighter fur, their lips will actually be pinkish as well as some of their snout where the fur isn't as thick and stuff. So I'm going to kind of do that on on this dude, which maybe he'd have more dark lips, but this kind of helps with the... Because we're doing the three-foot test here with these models, this helps with the contrast, and we'll give him a bit of a pinky nose. It's because it'll help it stand out better on the table. And because I decided I wanted it that way, which is the best reason to color, to put the, these colors on a model. Because that's what I want. His tail's freaking you out? Why? Because it's all pink? <clears throat> it's kind of a nice fleshy pink color. Got that mix, got that mix right. Amaze myself. Do I amaze you, chat? I must. I must amaze everybody with my amazing amazingness. And my humility is second to none. You know that's right. <laughs> newbie's forehead yep let's see does it match so i can't see chat does it match you have to tell me i got my glasses off so i can't tell how you doing Legger mortis welcome back sir how is chat land doing today There, all right, let's go back to the brown, see if we can smooth that coat out. Kind of good. Kind of good. We want really good. How do we get you to really good? Bah! Brush went all nuts. I'm doing good, man. Had a uh, good night's sleep tonight. I was all excited about getting up and painting this dude this morning. And I've got another 
another one of these brushes coming this week so I'm excited to see how that one does because this one is a little been a little flaky but I think that's a Amazon issue not a brush issue um, so good good so remind me Legger Mortis where you're from I know somewhere in Europe but I can't remember exactly I've had several people here from from Europe lately Poland, that's right, that's right. You showed me that picture of your lovely home town, village. Not sure what you guys call it over there, but it was pretty. So how's the weather right now in Poland? Still wintry? Because we're getting a little bit of a cold snap over here in Florida. Which is, you know, a thing we do once in a while. We get two days of winter over here and then then back to summer. Winds are aggressive, yeah. I could, because you were in, you were, your area was kind of, was really kind of mountainy, hilly area, wasn't it? So I imagine you get a good bit of wind over there. Oh my goodness. That's some, that's some hurricane force winds over there, buddy. You're getting into hurricane territory. Which is something I guess we have in common. Yeah, Ligger Mortis showed me a last time he was on, he showed me a picture of where he lives and it's gorgeous. Nice mountainy area and out in the country. It's nice. He's a he's a country boy from Poland. One of them are country boys like me. It was just a gorgeous, gorgeous area. I thought my stream bot was talking to me for a minute. But he's talking to you guys, so I'll just ignore him. You can ignore him too if you want. He just tries to be helpful every once in a while. All right, so I think we're good on the base coats there. I still haven't decided what color I want to do this guy's tunic. I mean, just a leather tunic would be boring. We need some color on this dude. Since he's kind of got this reddish pinky color, some kind of... You think red? Okay. Kind of a... Kind of a darker red I'm thinking like a like a red leather type look nice dark red leather how's that sound so let's go with do 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 that's not what I want what I want ooh here we go chat how about this cobalt scale as a base that's a nice dark red and it's kind of dirty looking and I like it. I think that's perfect. I think that's perfect for your description there, Ligger Mortis. Okay. Let me see. I think you can see them. Oh. Okay. I don't know. I'll get her to come up here in a minute. <laughs> you guys got to see this big old puppers we got. Her name is Marvin. Kind of a 
odd name for a girl dog, but had to do with family names, and the lady that, that got her wanted a boy dog, but ended up falling in love with this girl dog, but wanted to name the dog Marvin, so she named it Marvin. But she's a sweetie. Frickin' miniature horse is what she is. See, she's kind of napping it next to me right now because she's kind of attached to me. So every every room I go into, she has to follow me. Oh, she's good. Oh, was she here last time you were on? Yeah, she's she's just hanging out with us for the weekend, and she's uh, she's being good. She's being her normal Marvin self. She's terrified of dog. Yeah, we've got another a golden doodle here that's like 100-ish pounds. She's another regular that we have, and Marvin's like giving her the, the evil eye and um, doesn't particularly like her <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. The only Because the other one, um, the golden doodle is like, what, 11 years old, 10 years old, something like that. So she doesn't do much but lay down. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe Marvin is... Marvin's just kind of a nervous type. It's her owner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's wind and fire back there in the background. Legamortis says Hello. Hello. He's my kindred spirit country boy from Poland. Wow. That's cool. I hope I'm keeping this in frame chat. It's really hard to, <laughs> to do this, it turns out. Keep this stuff in frame while you're looking at the model, knowing where you are. Spatial relations. It's tough, guys. So if it goes out of frame or out of focus, I apologize. I, I try to check it every once in a while. but Sometimes I just get so into the paint and I forget that I'm, you know, supposed to be showing it to you guys, too. Oh no, I got some on his foot. Whatever shall we do? Well, let's just rub all the paint off down to the white. That's awesome. Oh, chat. Sometimes. Sometimes, chat. It's fine. It's fine. We got more paint. We'll fix it. We'll fix it, chat. Why are you worried? You shouldn't come on this channel and worry. You know it's always fine, chat. Oh, I'm digging this red, Ligger Mortis. That was a good idea. I like I like this red on here with them. See, I was I was initially thinking kind of an olive green or something to complement the reds in his tail and stuff, but this this I think is a better idea. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad you're here, chat. You guys helped me out. Collective wisdom. It's a good thing. Oh no, I got more red on his foot. Uh, uh, uh. Trying to figure out where the end of this thing is on his... Oh, the focus? Yeah, I'm trying to... Well... Where am I at? Where's my... <laughs> like we're helping. Stormcast... See, I'm not as familiar with Warhammer. I never got into the Warhammer stuff. Which, just because... Not because I don't 
like Warhammer. It's just because I didn't get into that stuff. I've just kind of stayed with the D&D thing. And, um... So I don't know much about what Stormcast Eternals are. I mean, I know Skavens. I play some uh, Warhammer... Um, Warhammer 2 on the computer. But... Well, I know Space Marines, but I also know there's like 8,000 different chapters of Space Marine, and they all have their colors. Um, ah, I see. So they're one of the chapters of the Fantasy Marines. Oh, dang it. Getting a little bit sloppy today with my brush. Let's see, did I get it all? No. And yeah, I'm sloppy on the ground. We'll clean that up when we paint the ground. It's fine, chat. Don't worry about that right now. All right, so now we got to get around here. Let's see if we can get the edges. Man, my hands are a little shaky today. Maybe I had too many cups of coffee. I have to do do some line clean up here. So let's see, Ligger Mortis, last time you were here, I think I was doing that, uh, like, fishing hut, right? And I, I finally finished that thing and put the pictures up on Instagram. Okay. Well, I'm thinking this dude needs to have some beady red eyes, so we'll go ahead and base him this color. We'll brighten him up later, but we'll we'll kind of base him up here with this. Checking to see if I missed any spots with this red because the lines are a bit hard to make out on this thing. Gosh, I missed this whole side here. How'd you let me do that, chat? How'd you let me do that, chat? So tonight. We're probably going to have the group one playing some arc. We're going to start a new arc map. Um, but we just record that. So 
That'll be going straight up to YouTube. We don't stream that one because we don't have it on a schedule. We just play that one when we get the itch and everybody's available. Because we already got too much stuff scheduled. But I really like that game. Anybody here played Ark? Hey. I'm kind of happy-ish with the uh, with that color scheme. Not liking this is looking more like a mustache than a lip, so I may do something else there. Not digging that. I don't know. What do you think, chat? That's a little weird. Uh oh, encoder overloaded. Uh oh, everything coming through okay, chat? Do I want to... I don't think that is gloves, because that looks awful furry right there. This must just be a wrist wrap. This one looks like it's gloves. To me. This one looks like it's just a wrist wrap. So, so I think do I want to keep the gloves that color or do a little bit of an accent color on here? See, I could put a little bit of green in there. Now, nah, that'll just be that'll get messy. We'll just do the gloves this color. Maybe we'll do the wrist wrap something else. Right, chat? I know you agree with that, chat. And we're going to brighten this all up. This is just base color. So, don't worry. I know it's really dark right now, but that's because this is like shadow level base color. It'll get better. Don't you worry, chat. So I'm going to go ahead and put a base coat of red on this wrist wrap because if I want to keep this red, I'll do that. If I want to go over it with another color, that'll work too, but at least this will give me the separation and help my brain keep track of this detail. So we may or may not keep this this color, but... Man, it's hard to keep this in focus. I'm so sorry, chat. I'm trying. So... Looking decent. Alright, let's fix this little, this little bits where I got sloppy on the fur. So, the way I paint, and this is different from some painters, I like to typically block out all my base colors first. And then I go back and do highlights and stuff. I've seen a lot of painters that'll just kind of concentrate on one color and do that whole thing, highlight it all up and get it all done in sections. But that's not my, my way of doing things. 
All right, so I'm going to go in with just some black and undercoat the metal bits. Black is a good undercoat for the silvers. If I want to do these more like stone, they're kind of looking. In which case, the black would still be a valid undercoat, but I wonder if maybe like flint, flint pickaxe and a flint knife might go well with this. All right, so we're going to get the inside of his mouth too. The black I've got pretty thinned down because I kind of want it, in this case, to be more of a wash because I need it to flow down in there. It's hard to get a brush up in that mess. A little bit in his nostrils there. Okay. And the pommel. Probably should have cut this support off the bottom of this pommel, but it's so thick. I don't know, chat. Should I cut that out of there? It's looking a little weird. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave the model as is and we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do with just the paint here. I don't do a lot of on on these kind of rough tabletop models that aren't iconic. I don't do a ton of prep work on them because I just don't see the point in spending that much time on these things. On these um, kind of the stock models. I want to make them look decent, but you don't need to go crazy with it. All right, so let's get some of this stuff out of the way. And we need, now we need a lighter brown for the, where's my, no, not that, that, nope, not that. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we got this flat earth color, um, Vallejo model color, and I'm going to use that for the um, handle of the pickaxe and the base as well. That's where I'll start with that. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on the base yet. I'm just going to get a, like a first coat on there as more of a primer and a, to get some of this white off of here because it's annoying. also start helping me pick out some of the details, the edges of where feet and clothing are on this thing.
Okay, so that's a little less glaring. Now let's see if we can pick out some of the edge here for some of these things. It's a little hard to get light under there. So, so much of the body is over the edge. So one thing we can do with this little edge here, I mean, really what we should be doing is cutting it out because it's goofy looking. Um, but what we can do, if we don't want to cut it out, is we can kind of disguise it later by putting some, some stuff around it for the base. So we will fix that up later, chat. Don't you worry even a little bit. All right, got to do a little fixing on the tail here. Had a little bit of slop. I don't have enough paint left to fix it. Come on, paint, you can do it. I just need a little bit. I'm not going to get it, am I? Fine. Rosy skin and a tiny touch of red. So you can see right here where I kind of slopped over a little bit with the base coat for the red. So we're just going to tighten this line up a little, I hope. Come on, brush. You can hang in there, brush. You can do it. You're a Raphael. You can do it. So now what I want to do is get a little bit of this dirty bone. Just a little bit. Don't need much. Doing a really small thing. We're just going to do this wrap up here on the head of the pickaxe. Does he have like a belt? No, it doesn't look like it. So another little touch up area on this fur here. I got a little sloppy with the red. going through trying to clean up edge edges here um, the 
before we start getting into the shading and stuff. Make sure if there's any places where the base coat is thin that I... Yeah, and I'm going to cover this back up because I'm not digging that lip thing I tried to do. Not digging it at all. Thanks, Sid. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the color there a little more than I thought I would. Brush, come on, stick with me. You can do it. You've done it before. You're not that old. You shouldn't be doing this stuff. So I'm also going to use this dirty bone color to kind of base coat these incisors, these big old rat incisors. And we're not going to worry about, we're going to have to come back and do some work on these, but I want to kind of block out this detail so that my brain doesn't get lost in all the brown. Also, this model doesn't have a lot of detail here in the face. I don't know if that's a sculpting issue or a casting issue, but the detail is really soft up here. So, we're just going to have to do the best we can do. Right, chat? Because what else are you going to do? Okay, so I think we've got all the basic uh, colors, base colors blocked in. I see a wrap down there by his foot. So we are going to, I think we'll make that kind of a cloth wrap. So we'll get some of this dirty bone here and maybe it's a wrap, maybe it's not. Or that maybe it's that's what it's supposed to be, but... That's what I've decided it is, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. do I see yeah I think I want to do this wrap up here this way because it'll kind of offset that color down there and there's way too much red I like this red but there's way too much of it we need more more color contrast I think overall So one trick I learned about, and I didn't learn it for mini painting, I learned it actually in web design, but it works for all kinds of art. When you're painting um, or designing, doing any kind of design work, it's a good idea to look at it and kind of blur your eyes and then see that's a good way to kind of see overall composition without detail so that you can find out how your colors are distributed and where your eye is going to focus so that's a common tactic in web design to see where on the page the eyes focus but it works well with painting too especially minis because with minis you got such a small area that you want to make sure that you've got a lot of contrast and that colors are kind of balanced so that um 
you're not pulling the eye to a bad part of the model. Like in this particular case, the focal point right now would probably be the tail because of the color that it is. So we're going to have to do some work on the face to get the focal point back to the head um, where we want it. Now, if this were an iconic model, I'd spend a lot more time dealing with that. But there are some things we can do to kind of help that out. All right, so now that we've got the bases kind of covered, I'm going to go back and do some more work on the fur and the skin. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to start highlighting up a bit. And I will probably do some dry brushing here, ultimately. But first, I'm going to work on this snout. Because we want to bring a bit of color into this. And I'm going to do that by kind of simulating some lighter fur around the snout. So I'm not really highlighting. Uh, I'm just kind of drawing, really drawing some fur on here. Now you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of moisture on your brush when you're doing this because otherwise it'll just go everywhere. And I'm just using this same flat earth color that I used for the um, thing, the, the, you know what I'm trying to say, chat. stipple it back here. Because we want it to kind of blend back, but I don't want it to actually blend because it's fur. So, like if you look at a dog, their fur doesn't fade out when it's changing colors. It just kind of more gradually changes colors. You'll get less of like the lighter colored fur and more of the darker colored fur and it looks like a fade but it's not actually so you can kind of simulate that with stippling on a model so and we'll want to do a few things with this to kind of blend it better but you can already see that it it pulls it's doing more to pull your eye towards his head than before. So that's what we're trying to do here. All right, so now we're gonna keep doing some work on that. I'm gonna get some of this dirty bone out of the way you. Need a little more and we're gonna mix some of that into the flat earth to tone it down a bit and we're going to do kind of the same thing but a little bit less Washing dishes. All right, man. So we want more of the lighter colors up towards the snout. And we're going to highlight his nose too, so that'll help bring some of the contrast up there. 
and then I'm just going to start stippling this back towards, oh my gosh, chat, I'm so sorry. I'm not doing any, any good keeping this in focus. Now I'm going to do heavier stippling where there would be highlights on the model. So like the tops of his ears will get more of this color. But we don't want to just paint flat highlights on here because we want it to look like bumpy fur. So it's kind of painting texture into it. So I'm going to lighten up the color a little bit more. Okay, so um, so you can see we kind of, with the stippling effect, we've kind of done some highlighting. I mean, it works as highlighting, but it's not as, as smooth and stark, but we don't want it that way because this is fur. So it should be kind of broken up and, and um, textured, um, the paint. So... That's kind of what I'm trying to do here with the stippling. Now, we will go back and do a little bit of work on his eyes. We want some smooth highlights there because that's kind of where we want the focus pulling towards the center of the face. So, we're going to do a little bit of normal highlighting on the eyes there. So I want to thin my paint a little more than what I was doing with the stippling. We're going to go back to a little bit darker color. Get some of the moisture off the brush because we don't want this running everywhere. And we're just going to kind of give him some eyeliner here. So it's just like, you know, when you put eyeliner on in real life, it highlights the eyes, accentuates the eyes, and makes them more of a focal point. That's kind of what we're doing here. Now I want to get some more red in the eyes. So we're going to go after just some flat red here. Sculpt looks a little cross-eyed, which is 
see if we can fix that up a little bit. <sighs> so from the three foot test, this is looking pretty decent. I know up close it looks a little dirty, but from three feet away it looks pretty good, I think. So we're going to do a little bit more of this stippling. Now you could just dry brush this fur and it would probably be faster, but I'm I've been playing with this kind of stippling effect lately and I'm I'm kind of liking it. So I want to continue on with it. Across the rest of the body and see see what we can pull off here. And it takes longer, but personally, I kind of like it better. At least it's new to me, so it's more fun. Right? Right, chat? And I know initially this looks pretty stark, this color contrast, but A, you want you want high contrast on the minis, but B, don't forget that acrylic paint dries much more dull than it goes on, so this will this will dull down a little bit as it dries. And we're going to do more in lighter layers because we want to lighten him up a bit. We don't want him this dark on the table. That undercoat is more shadow than anything else. Now we could, chat, what we could do on these fingies here is we could actually kind of fade these out to the same pink as the tail. One of the reasons I think that might be a good idea is that it'll bring this color more forward and help move some of this up towards the head where we want the focus. So I'm thinking that might be a way we want to go. The other problem with dry brushing here is the sculpt on this, the bottom of the feet, well, most of the feet actually, are just flat. So if we were to dry brush that, it wouldn't come across really as fur very well. But if we stipple it like this, at the three foot look, it's going to look more like fur because you're going to have some texture on there. Um, so... I think that's working out pretty good. We want some more colors there. I'm still debating what to do with these hands, though. I think for now I'm just going to go ahead and, and 
continue the fur up here. But let me change that. Beauty thing about painting is we can change that. All right. I'm just going to do one more color on the fur out here. Go pretty pretty light. But I don't I don't need to spend a ton of time on that. I mean, if we were trying to golden demon this, well, if we were trying to golden demon this, we wouldn't be using a bones because the detail is not sharp enough. Probably going with a metal model, but we'd spend a lot more time on this. We are not trying to do that. We're trying to get good tabletop models out here. So, very light on this color, very light stippling. This is almost that pure dirty bone color. It's just got a little bit of that brown in it to tone it down a little. And I'm just going to stick to the highlight areas with this. All right, so what I want to do now, so that we can keep focus on the face, is I think I want to go one, one layer lighter just on a little bit of the face. Um, just to kind of bring some of that focus up there. I think, though, I'm, I'm liking this effect for the fur. I think this is working out well. I think I think I like this better than dry brushing would work. Honestly. I don't know. You decide, chat. But I'm gonna get this splintered bone color, which is kind of an off white. Thanks, Sid. Just so I can have a little bit more highlight on the face. And I'm not even going to thin this down because I'm going to put so little of it on. And I don't want it going very far. I just want a little bit.
So I'm trying to be a little more controlled with this color because I don't want it getting away from me. So, I think that's about as much work as I want to do on the fur for this dude. Um, again, because I'm just going for tabletop quality here, so let's not let's not go overboard. Now, let's turn to his armor. So, there's a couple of things we could do with the armor here. Um, I've also wanted to, I, I've seen this stippling, um, technique used to great effect to make kind of worn leather look. So we could kind of do that with the armor, but in this case, I think that may be overdoing the stippling on this model because there's so much of it on the fur that I'm not sure I want to do that. So I think we're just going to do regular old highlights on this. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I've got this uh, Vallejo Carmine Red. So we're just going to build up a couple, couple layers of high, good grief. I didn't mix that at all. Uh, one thing I like about Reaper over Vallejo is that Reaper has those little agitators in the bottles, and that helps quite a bit. Okay, we'll leave you alone. Come back over here. Yeah, that's better. So we're going to make this quite thin because we're going to do some layering. Now red... Red is a very translucent color. It's hard to get good coverage with reds. So, you usually want to go a little bit thicker with reds than you do with other things. Now, this is going to cover most of this armor, this color. Because we want to start working on brightening this up a good bit. And this base color is going to be mostly just highlight. I mean, shadow. What is wrong with my brain? Not enough coffee for my brain, but too much coffee for my hands. Eh. Mini painting is a fine line when you're talking about coffee. Not anywhere in frame. I'm sorry, chat. I'm trying. I'm still learning this. Still learning this skill. It's a tough one. Okay, so for beginners, when you're doing this layering stuff, it may look like I'm painting kind of backwards when I'm pulling up, but you want to 
the most of your pigment is going to be deposited where your brush lifts up. So you want to paint towards where you want the most highlight. So we're going to let most of this under here be dark. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Plus, we're not looking to make the leather the focal point. We want it to look nice, but... I'm starting to have to move where I'm holding things because my arms are getting tired. So you can see I'm going over just, just about all of this with this color. I'm trying to pull it up towards the highlights, but this color is going to be kind of the primary color for this leather. Still still dark, but not, not the shadow color. So I am going to get a little bit brighter red going here. And one of the things that I want to do is I've got this marigold yellow, which is kind of a light orange color. So I don't want to lighten this red with white because that'll just make it pink i don't want pink so if we take a look at our color wheel here if we want to lighten our red we can use yellows and oranges to move it around the color wheel instead of white to move it down the color wheel so because if we just add white to this we're going to get a pink and we don't want that. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use this to lighten things up. Not a ton of it. Highlighting red is kind of tricky. I would say just as tricky as highlighting black. And there may actually be some times when you want to go towards pink, but this isn't one of those times. At least not in my mind. 
And we're going to make this pretty thin because we want some of this under layer to show through. We don't want it to be just this color. We're doing a lot of pretty slow layers here, which is more time than I would normally spend on a model like this, but I just sometimes like to uh, sometimes I just get into it and decide I want to go a little more detailed than normal. And I just happen to be in one of those moods. So here we go. is starting to fray again and I can't wait to get that new brush that's gonna be more better So the thinner the layers are, and the more layer, more thin layers you put on, the smoother the transitions are going to be. But the trade-off is the time it takes. So I could do five layers of this color really, really thin and build it up towards doing a little bit less on each layer and build it up towards this color slowly and get really smooth transitions. Or I could go a little bit thicker do fewer layers and have the contrast faster so there's a trade-off there that you have to decide on the more thin layers you look uh, the the more thin layers you do the better the paint job is going to look the smoother the paint job is going to look but how much time do you want to spend on a stock model for your table? That's the question. I probably spend way more time than I should on stock models, but it's fine. It's because I enjoy it. My gosh. So we're getting there. Getting there, chat. I need some more of this color.
So I'm about 50-50 with this marigold yellow and the red, just plain old red. To get this dark orange, reddish orange color. And that's kind of where I want this to end up. I don't want to go much past that. I'm going to go a little bit thicker because I want the... I don't need as smooth. I want it to go faster. So we're going to go a little thicker. Just hit the high points. Not real thick. It's still thin paint, but... A little thicker than I was doing. Most of this color is, we're just trying to get on the edges of things, or close to the edges. And we just want the very highest kind of highlights here. Because we don't want, we don't want the armor to look orange. We still want it to be red. But we want to, it needs to be highlighted. High lit, high, high, highlight, or high, you know what I mean, chat. And yeah, I know I'm getting some on the ground, but that's fine. We're gonna we still got a lot of work to do on the ground, and we're not gonna worry about that right now. We'll fix that later. It's fine, chat. don't however want to get it on the feetsies <sighs> so it's getting there it's getting there chat problem is I got several more of these that I need to do I mean not here live but just I've got to get them done, so. D dang it.
So I think that's probably enough work on that armor there. I don't think we need to go too much further with it. Now, I want to brighten his nose up a little bit because that'll help bring some of the focus back on his face. And here we do want pink. So I'm going to go with this Reaper Master Series pink paint that they sent for the uh, cancer breast cancer awareness month it was free and that was very cool of them and it's a good color i think as kind of a highlight for the the little nosy nose we'll get a little bit of red in it but Right. So that instantly kind of moves the focus up because it's the lightest color, one of the lightest colors on this model. So that helps a lot. I think I am going to do kind of a flint on the on the weapons here so I've just got some uh, MSP shadowed stone it's just a dark gray and I'm gonna have to I, the, there's no detail on these so I'm going to have to figure out how to paint a little detail in but first we got to kind of get most of it this base Now, I think what I'm going to have to do here is get a very light gray, this sky gray. And we are going to... I'm going to let that base dry for a second. In the meantime, I am going to look up. And don't worry, Chad, I'll let you look with me. I'm going to look up some reference. So, here, let me switch this over real quick. 
All right, so we can see, let's see what we can find about a flint knife. So it's got kind of this, towards the handle, it's going to have some rough things. We're going to want to put kind of a, um, a bevel edge here, and then it, it kind of has this streaked looking effect where the pieces have been kind of chipped off. So this is kind of the look I'm trying to go for. Um, we'll see, we'll see how well I do with that. Well, that's smaller. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Let's see what we can do, chat. This will be a fun little experiment. So we're going to want lighter gray and we're going to have to deal with thin lines here. So we don't want things too wet or it's just going to be running all over the place. And we just want a little bit of paint. So let's see what we can do. So first of all, I'm going to kind of edge. I'm going to make sure I'm in frame. Kind of edge this. And we're going to bring out this a little bit like we saw. We're going to need a bevel edge on here. And then we want to kind of paint lines on it. I'm going to water this part down a little bit more because I don't want these lines quite as stark as the the edge lines that I put on there. I want them the same color, but I want them a little more translucent, a little less noticeable. Okay, so, oh gosh, I'm sorry, chat. Hold on. Get this back to where I'm painting here. So, I know there was a lot of lineage up in this area, but I'm not going to paint that because we're just trying to get the, the point across, <laughs> as it were. Yeah, yeah, I said that. So, I'm just going to... Do it down where the edge, the bevel is. So we're going to put a bevel line in there. Now, this isn't the, the straightest line in the world, but that's actually okay because in this case, we want it to be a little, look a little choppy. And we'll do some more work here. Don't worry. Don't worry, chat. We'll be doing some more things here. But this is how we're going to get the basics of this look done. And we don't want uniform lines here either. We want some thinner and some thicker. So... Hmm. This, this side is looking a little better than this side, but it's still good enough. All right, so. So I want to let that dry pretty good. So we'll go on to this thing.
different shape, but same stuff going on here. So we're going to put a little detail down here too on this because there's just not enough detail on these weapons for my liking, so we'll just put a little down there. It's fine. It's fine, chat. It's okay. What up, Game Master? Sorry, I can't always read the chat. I got my glasses off so I can see detail while I'm painting. So I have to put them back on to read the chat, but how are you doing, good sir? We're just... Uh, Doing a little experimenting with some some things on this whir rat. It's the first time I've tried doing flint weapons. See how that turns out. Also trying to get better with the uh, painting camera here. It's rough. It's giving me fits, man. All right, so we get a little little bit of this darker gray in here give me kind of a medium tone we're gonna do a little more work here again I don't want this really watered down It's not medium enough. <sighs> ah, editing, editing. Woohoo. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate you being here. So we're just going to get some of this other color out here. And then I'm going to move across this uh, edge line a little bit to break it up. Because we don't want it smooth. Because flint is not a smooth thing. I mean, I think that's looking okay, considering there's no actual detail on this sculpt for this thing. I'll put a little bit of faint lineage up here in this part, because there is on a real flint knife this lineage, but I don't want it too stark up here.
Okay. Getting there, getting there. I think a little bit more and we'll kind of have the look I'm going for. All right, so I'm going to go back to the brighter color, the sky gray. And we're going to do just a little bit more with that. To kind of put some of the edge back on this here. I'm just going to get a little bit of the light color up here on the top of this dagger because I just want it to be kind of broken lines. So, hmm. Well, for a first time out, I think that looks pretty decent for flint, considering there's no actual detail in the sculpt. I think that did okay. Gets the point across anyway, I think. That it's a flint flint tools and not steel, right? I don't know. What do you think, chat? Did I accomplish the goal here? I mean, there's probably some things I could do better, but again, little stock tabletop model. We don't need to go nuts. Uh... Honestly, the pommel, I'm not going to do a ton of work with here. I'm just going to give it a bit of an edge so it looks a little sharper, a little more like stone, but I'm not going to do a lot here. Okay. So I'm going to call the, the tools done. That's good enough. Let's see. So this tail needs a little work. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go with this kind of pinkish red. Get a little more red here. I need that flesh color back. Going to go a little darker with this this tail color and we're going to put some detail into the tail. Detail in the tail. red enough so fix that So we're going to do a little more line painting here with this little darker pinky flesh color as soon as my eyes stop itching. Oy. And so rat's tails are generally, they've got kind of this line thing going on. So we're going to do a little bit of that. I don't want stripes really. Yeah, 
and we don't want it to be very stark. Tony Stark? What? Wait, what? No. I didn't just say that. But we're kind of trying to create some detail that's not here, so, you know, we just have to do the best we can. Because we don't just want that pink thing sticking out, we want a little bit of... I'm also going to put a little bit of um, detail on the nose here with this color. Just subtle, but I just want to kind of break this up a little bit. Okay, so it's a little weird looking, but, but, I'm going to try to put kind of a wash over this once this is all dry and kind of tone it all together. Because I just want to kind of get the impression of, you know, little wrinkles in the tail and give it a little bit of visual interest. I don't know, I think that's, hmm, I think this is coming out okay. It's at least fun to look at. So, So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get, I'm not, the eyes are looking a little bland, so I'm going to put, I need to brighten them up a little. They are not quite where they need to be. I don't want them pink. I don't know, maybe this, this color I was doing on the tail would be good. Is that bright enough? Or should I go more orangey? Maybe a mix of those two? Let's experiment, shall we, chat? To get it a little towards the pink values, but not too far. Little beady eyes. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be a nice bright color. Right, chat? Hey, Trey noob. You know everything. No, I don't chat. Let's just get a little of this on the center of the eye. So I think that's a little better. I still want to break this nose up a little bit. That's a little too pink. I like this a little better. Still pinkish, but not ridiculous. Know what I'm saying, chat? Alright, so we've gotten this far without doing any washes, which is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with washes. I use washes all the time, and there's even pros. Bright orange with a yellow dot. Well, I mean... Okie doke. I've got this marigold yellow, which is kind of an orangey yellow. And we're going to mix in, because I don't really have bright orange pre-mix, so I'm going to kind of mix this in with some red and get 
this orangey, more orangey color. So you think going, you think going a little more orange. Like this. You're liking that, huh? I'll do that. I'll experiment. It's cool. You can help chat. I like the help. I need the help. I'm not smirt. You guys are smirt. Let's see what happens. Because if we don't like it, we can always try something else, right? I might actually want to have some of this paint actually on my brush. That might help. Definitely brightens it up. Which is good because this is where we want the focal point to be. Are we having fun, chat? I'm having fun. I like this. We've experimented with a lot of cool things on here. All right, so now I don't want to go too bright yellow, but this marigold yellow I think will be good for pupils. Very steady hands. There's an issue with this sculpt, though. One side is way different than the other. But, I mean, there you go, chat. How does that work? I think that works pretty good. It looks more like shine than a pupil, but that's that's okay. That's actually kind of what I was wanting. I don't want really too human in the eyes. So, yeah, I'm I'm happyish with this. I think I want to do a bit of a glaze on this tail to tie things together. So we're gonna do that. So we're going to water down. Now I could use glaze medium here, which I probably would normally, but A, I don't feel like getting it out, and B, most people probably aren't going to have that, and since this is kind of a beginner show, we're going to stick with mostly beginner things. So I've just watered this way down. Because I just want a glaze is just a really thin layer of paint. Really, really thin. So you can barely see anything. What it's going to do is it's just going to kind of even out the... Kind of blend together the... Uh, the colors here. So that the contrast isn't so stark. You see, you see there, chat. Now the thing is, you have to let things dry thoroughly underneath that, or you're just going to end up with a smudge of paint. But it's all—it's a glaze is kind of like a wash, except it doesn't have a surfactant in it, so it doesn't flow everywhere. It just goes on evenly, but it's very, very thin. You're just kind of color shifting and and blending things with a glaze. And I may actually do that on the armor too. Eh, nah. Nah, we're gonna leave the armor a little stark there, because it's not, because I, because I like it like that. I like it that way. It's fine, chat. So, I mean, we've got basing to do, but I think, I think, chat, we can call this mini done other than the base, and I'll get the, I'll get the base done. And I will um, then post the photos on Instagram so you can get nice, clear pictures. Because I know this wasn't always in focus with this camera. Um, one of these days, maybe I'll be able to afford to get a DSLR and 
do this much, much better. But until then, we just got to do what we got to do. Right, chat? So anyway, next week, we get to tackle this big fella, this Ankeg. So this will be fun. This will have a lot of fun glazing and stuff in it. It's got some actually fairly good detail, and it looks like it's going to be a fairly fun model to to try to get around. Um, it's going to be challenging because of some of the structures on it, but you know what? We'll make it work, Chat. I'm probably going to reform these antennae a little bit and get them up instead of down, so I'll try to get that done before next week. But this is, this is our fun project our last project for mini month uh because it's the last saturday in february but i decided to go ahead and tackle a a big one uh that's what we'll be doing next week this i think is pretty good shot at a couple hours of painting this week um how long did we go actually yeah 215 we've been working on this so you know, a little over two hours. Not bad. I'll finish up the base because nobody wants to see me paint a base. Just I'm just going to, you know, kind of dry brush the base a little bit and then uh, throw some grass on there, static grass, um, and it'll be done. And then I'll throw the pictures up on Instagram. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give us a follow. And if you've seen it on YouTube, give us a like, maybe subscribe, uh, mash all the buttons, ding all the bells, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. And until next time, paint on.